Today I've got another problem from TBO's problem solving booklet, which is uh, consists of 151 questions designed for people uh, preparing for undergraduate admissions interviews for maths. Let's have a look at this one. For n bigger than one, the integers from one to n squared are placed in the cells of an n by n chessboard. Show that there is a pair of horizontally, vertically, or diagonally adjacent cells whose values differ by at least n plus one. Now, if you were given this in an interview, you perhaps might ask some questions, maybe to clarify exactly what's being asked of you, or maybe just understand the problem a bit better. Uh, but one thing that I'd encourage you to do is if you are answering this, and it seems like a bit of a random problem, I can't think of similar problems I've answered before, just play around with it. Let's just try values of n, and that will also help us understand if we've well understood the problem correctly, but also see if we can detect some underlying structure. So n is bigger than 1. Let's start with the easiest integer, n is 2. So we're drawing uh, a, a 2 by 2 chessboard, so, or a 2 by 2 grid, and we're putting the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in there. So let's put them in some random order. 1, 2, 3, 4, I don't know, something like this. And we want to show that there's a pair of numbers, either horizontally, vertically, diagonally, uh, whose values differ by at least n plus 1. So if n is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So I need to show that there's a pair of digits that, that differ by at least 3. Well, 1 and 4 do the job here. And actually, I realize, hold on, any 2 by 2 grid will work, because wherever 1 is, 4 will have to be in one of the other squares. And according to this, this is considered adjacent. Um, so in fact, that proves all 2 by 2 cases. OK, let's do 3 by 3. Does it work similarly there? So if I take n is 3 and draw a 3 by 3 grid, and I'm just going to put these numbers in randomly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I don't know, something like this. And so here, n plus 1 would be 4. So I'm looking for a pair of digits which are 4 apart. In fact, there's a bunch of ways to do that. I got 8, 4 there. I got 8, 2, 8, 1, 7, 3. Uh, there may be some other 6, 1 there, 9, 3. Um, so there's a bunch of ways to kind of get at least 4 apart. Hmm. Obviously, this works for this very particular 3 by 3 grid, but it's not as obvious how we'd prove this in general. Um, and it turns out for this problem, you prove this by contradiction. So in fact, I'm going to use an n by n, keep n arbitrary for the time being. And we're going to just consider a move on a chessboard. So if we have a chessboard like this, something like this. So this is a five by five, or no, six by six even um, chessboard. I think uh, no, one more horizontal line. There we go, six by six, something like this. And we're just going to consider how you get from one square to another square using these kind of moves of either moving horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. What's the maximum number of moves it will take? Well, let's say these two squares here, How? what's the maximum move, number of moves it will take? Well, I can go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's an example of how I can get that in, well, five moves. So that's maybe one example. Well, what's the worst case? Well, you might think, well, if you have two diagonally opposite ones, well, you can still go one, two, three, four, five. So this is where we have a six by six um, kind of board, and the max number of moves uh, is five. And that's kind of the rule in general. So if you've got um, an n by n grid, the maximum number of moves you'll take to get from one square to another square is n. Okay, interesting. How does this allow us to prove that there must be at least one pair of adjacent squares, either diagonally, vertically, horizontally, that differ by at least n plus one? Well, let's do this by contradiction. Let's imagine we have, you know, these numbers filled in one, two, three, four, whatever, all the way up to n squared. Let's then consider where the square one is and then wherever the square n squared is. Now, let's do this by contradiction. Let's assume that every single jump has value at most n. So that means going from one to the next move, the maximum I can go up is by n. And so that will take me to at most n plus 1. Then I'll do some other move. And that's the maximum that can take me to is n plus 2. And I'll do a bunch of moves, namely n minus 1 moves. And I will have to be able to get to n squared. But that's not possible, because if I do 1 plus um, each move thereafter will be at most n. 
And then if I do at most n minus one of them, that gives me n squared minus n plus one. But since n is bigger than one, I know that this is going to be strictly less than n squared. And so therefore, I will not be able to get from the square with one in it to n squared. And so this is a contradiction. And so therefore, one of these jumps in my kind of jumping process must have been at least n plus one. And that gives us the result that we want. So it's a really interesting problem. And I'd be very interested to see how different uh, students face this problem. Um, but I think certainly in an interview, the thing they'd be looking out for is uh, giving the problem a go. So with small values of n, seeing if you can spot something and then kind of realizing that there's almost, almost too many constraints if we force everything to be at most n from one another. And then, yeah, thinking about, OK, well, how do I get from one square to another square? And obviously n squared grows a lot more quickly than n does. And that's kind of useful here. OK. I'll finish the video there. Hopefully you did enjoy. I made a, another video where I do a problem from this book, but I quite enjoy them and also did very well in terms of views. Um, I also have lots of videos on the channel with Oxbridge preparation stuff. And I also have made a few mock interview uh, videos on this channel. So do check those out. And best of luck if you are preparing for Oxbridge mock interviews. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.